Do you like true ghost stories? I do. He does. So let's turn down the lights, grab your cup of coffee, and let's go. Well, hello, my spooky friends and wonderful weirdos like me and Scully. If you don't know Scully, this is Scully. He's got a lot of opinions. I try to tell him to zip it. But he loves ghost stories, and so do I, especially when they're true. Now, a lot of these stories are told by nurses, and they may or may not be in the hospital setting. Not all of them are in this episode. All right, let's get comfortable. This comes from a viewer, Zuli. I don't know if this is, there was some more to that or not. This was wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you for commenting. I saw my father just after he passed. He just appeared and was gone quickly. I recognized his long blue coat. Well, I think that's really cool. If you, you know, I hope that I get to like wave on my way out. Yeah. Toodles. I don't know. But I think that's cool. Thank you so much for sharing that. By the way, if you want to share, you can comment below or you can email me at avalincottage at gmail.com. Or you can find me on Facebook. I just started it. There's not a whole lot on there, but you know, but I'm hoping we can get it going. If you don't want to share publicly, please let me know and I won't. All right. This next one comes from Ameline Six. My grandmother. My grandma had dementia. One night, my grandpa woke up and found her wandering all over their one-story house, seeming to search for something. He asked her what she was looking for, and she said, the stairs. I can hear a choir singing, and they want me to come up and join them. She passed away a couple of days later. Well, I think that's cool. I think I hope I hear a choir, maybe a jazz band. You know, I think that would be fun. Like the big New Orleans jazz band. I think that would draw me in. <laughs> anyway, a lot of people, you would be surprised, hear music and or talk to loved ones on their way out. This one comes from Cheeto Goddess. I love me some Cheetos now. <laughs> the story of the baby that death was stalking reminds me that we as nurses are actual reaper snatchers i love this term reaper snatchers i'm a reaper snatcher it makes me feel so important and the nurses know you get no recognition okay so being a reaper snatcher is exciting one aspect of ghost stories I am fascinated with is phone calls from the dead. So many people have experienced this. Yes, they have. My dad called my sister after passing and said he was cold and to come get him. This upset me so. Oh, wow. Now, you know, the new fear unlocked. Well, it's really an old fear. Like, I've heard about ghosts saying they're cold. Like, I, I hate cold. I don't want to be cold. I don't want to be stuck here. And I don't want to be cold. I don't know. Are you cold, Scully? Like, should I get him a blanket? I don't, I, I don't know. I hope that he found a warm place in the afterlife. But maybe it's what happens when you're transitioning. I don't know. What do y'all think? This one comes from Samantha Springman. Sorry, y'all. I woke up with a sore throat and uh, like, yeah, I got it going on. So if I sound funny, that's why. Samantha says, I worked at a state mental hospital. Psychiatric tech was the label of my job. I saw things and heard things that would scare you blue. LOL. The lady yelling taxi wasn't all about climbing the stairway to heaven. She was going in style. That was from a few videos back. She you knows she was yelling taxi. I can tell you with all honesty that possession does exist and it is different from mental illnesses. I 100% agree, Samantha. I think we've talked a little bit about that. And I'm going to leave that right here for now. Jham1970. I've I'm always considered myself to not be a superstitious person. I have college degrees and I consider myself a person of science, but I have seen some weird things and have experienced things that will make your hair stand on end. After living in a haunted house for 25 years, the hauntings were just sort of a novelty until they were no longer a novelty. 
and my wife and I had to call in a guy to cleanse our house. It worked. Knock on wood. Maybe I shouldn't have knocked. <laughs> but, hey, yeah. Like, look, when if you have a house that's haunted, like, you know. You know. I get a kick out of all these people on these ghost shows that, you know, they say things like, oh, well, when I started walk working at this bar, you know, uh, I didn't I didn't believe in ghosts. I just thought it was, you know, silly until I had an encounter. And that's always the way it is, y'all. You don't believe in ghosts until you see one. And then you don't know what to do. So this is why you watch this channel. And we talk about plans for the afterlife. What do you do? Arky girl. Hello, new subscriber here. I just listened to the stories in the last three. And oh my God, I had chills running up and down all over my body. I still have goosebumps. These are absolutely cool stories. Thank you. Thank you so much, Arky girl. Definitely love paranormal stories. My mom passed away in a nursing home 10 years ago and on my birthday, oh, oh wow. And for a week solid, she laid in her bed staring at the corner in her room. And I think in all honesty, she was seeing my grandparents standing there waiting for her. Arky girl, I would not be a bit surprised because I've heard that over and over. I have been there many hundreds, thousands. I don't even know how many times in my career I have been there in the end stages, the last week, you know, the last day, sometimes the last second um, when someone is passing. And they do seem to have a interaction with something going on that we can't see. So I wouldn't be surprised at all. And I hope that gave her some peace, you know? Okay, now I'm going to move on to some other stories I have found in some groups. These are all true stories. I had a spirit follow me from house to house for a few years while I was a kid. I was young when it started, and I only know what I have been told about that time. I do remember it later on. The first instance, I was four or five, and I don't remember it, and only know what I was told. We lived in a Victorian house with three floors. One night, my parents heard noise outside, and I went to investigate. I was on the roof of the house about to jump off. Oh my, oh, oh my God. Oh my God. So like you were about to jump and you, you woke up, I'm guessing that's what happened. Reason given was that my friend Benny had asked me to do it so I could be with him. Oh heck no. No. Oh my God. Your poor parents. Um, we moved shortly after and Benny followed me. Not cool, Benny. I had him with me until I was 10. Oh, that's pretty old to be saying like stuff. Then he just stopped coming. I had many, many conversations with him. Spent many days talking to this thing. Vivid memories. He was a tall, skinny shadow. No facial features or anything. Oh, my, wasn't that terrifying though? Like, I can see if Benny looked like a little boy, maybe that you were talking to, but, you know, with regular features. But how was that not terrifying to you as a kid to see something with no facial features? Oh my gosh. He would talk to me, but he didn't have a mouth. No. No. It seems so bizarre now at 45, but it was just normal for me then. I spent several years with him, and I think about it often still. I wonder where he went and why he left. I don't know, but I'm glad he did, because he wanted you to jump off the roof to be with him. That's no. That is spooky as crap, and no. Jeez, was there anything else I wonder that Benny did over the years? But like after you wouldn't jump off the roof, did he just like kind of hang out? And I want to know what what did y'all talk about? Like, I want more details. What do you talk to? Y'all talk about life? You talk about relationships? I don't know. I don't know. I've never had a conversation with a ghost, so I don't know. Y'all tell me. 
The house we live in now we only discovered was haunted when we began renovations after two years of already living here. Y'all ain't that the way. It's, I don't know why, but this sparks it all. Obviously, there were spirits around when we got here, but as usual, once we started tearing down walls and pulling up floors, etc., the activity began. I've had my hair pulled, been slapped, been poked, and pinched, and been pulled out of bed. No, I'm saying exorcism. I'm saying exorcism now. No. One night, my husband was in the living room watching late night sports. And I was in bed facing the wall. Our bedroom door has a distinctive squeak when you open it. I heard the door open and someone get into bed next to me. So I turned around to speak to my husband, but there was nobody there. I've never moved so fast in all my life. Girl, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> my husband has been held down in numerous occasions when he's just lying on the couch, not watching TV, not asleep, so not sleep paralysis. I'm forever hearing my name called, <sighs> even when I'm the only one in the house. The dog interacts with whatever's here and just sits staring into the corner of the room, any room doing this thing she does when with her ears when you talk to her. I know what you're talking about. You know, when the dog, you know, you can tell. I came home from work yesterday to blaring music and the stereo was on, but nobody was home. Well, was it good music, though? I mean, you know, was it like something you could vibe with or, you know, was it some kind of crap? Like, it's, I, like no, don't be playing bad music when I'm not here. I'm just saying. I was the last to leave the house and the stereo certainly wasn't on when I went out and you need to manually turn it on. <sighs> okay. Anyway, loads of crazy stuff still happens, but I've spent too much time on this. Okay, I get I get that. Like, you know, it is unnerving and and look. Here's the thing. And and this goes for you too, Scully. I'm just saying. Look, dude. I don't want a high electric bill because you up in here turning the lights on and off, turning the stereo on, uh, all this kind of shenanigans, okay? You ain't paying the bills. Now when you start and then I come home and I, you know, hear music, I'm like, okay, it's okay. Scully's got it. But until then, y'all ghosts need to take it down a bunch of notches. You're making it hard on the living. First house we bought together, and before we were even a paranormal thing, I heard and felt a bone-chilling, deep, animalistic growl in my right ear several times. Look, I hate that. I hate that. I've heard that. I hate that. Like, right in my ear, I could feel its breath. Look, one time, I was woken up with a dog barking right next to my bed, like a big woof woof, and early in the morning, and... I didn't have a dog and it was right beside my bed. I've heard growls too, but not here, not at this house. Another time I was painting our bedroom walls, the house was empty. And when I heard boots walking down the hallway toward me, aggravated, my partner wasn't coming to the bedroom <laughs> to check out the new color on the wall. I go out into the hallway to find no one there. So I then run outside to see where my partner is and find him riding the lawnmower, cutting the grass. From having to learn how to remove this very evil thing, it would scratch and bruise me constantly from our home. No. Developed into our full-time job of paranormal investigating and helping other people who have the same problems. Look, I love that you're helping people with paranormal problems because, like, look, it is a real thing for some people. And I get that. Um, but, yeah, nobody wants to go through the training period, okay? The scratching, the growling, no. Um, but, hey, kudos to you for helping people out because it can be very scary for some people. My mother's house. I lived there when I was young. There is an old lady there. We called her Old Lady Carruthers. Scooby-Doo thing. I don't remember that from Scooby-Doo. Okay. I've heard what sounds like heavy boxes being dropped. I've heard furniture moving above my room 
in my sister's room. It was the ghost hours, I remember. One night, I needed to go pee at around 3 a.m. Who does it? <laughs> Have I said too much? I walked to the door to open it. I hear what sounded like a walker being pushed across the floor. I heard a woman talking. I said, Mom? Mom? I got nothing. I opened the door and there was nothing. The next day I told my mom. She said, I thought I heard someone say mom. She saw her one morning standing behind her chair. She touched her shoulder. Mom said she looked like an old school mom. I'm not afraid of her. She also grabs feet. Oh, no, no, not my feet. No, no feet. I tell her to leave my feet alone at night. She can do whatever she wants. No, you can't do that either. <laughs> but leave my feet alone. <laughs> no, that's terrifying. After my grandma passed, I got the smell of mothballs. That's how it smelled in the cabin when I used to lay on her bed and look at the hummingbirds and the lake. It brought me back to a wonderful memory. Hey, I'm really glad because a lot of times, like, we associate smells with certain people. And it doesn't have to be, like, a great smell. Like, mothballs isn't a great smell. But if it brings you happy memories, then, you know... Maybe that's their way of letting you know everything's okay and they're still surrounding you. Okay, so that's all we have for this time. But I am going to be back with another set of uh, stories and probably Scully too because I already did. Like I had an hours long video. Oh my gosh. And uh, like it had no sound. So I am having to reshoot it. Tell me below. Do you like longer videos like over 15 or 30 minutes or just around 15 or less please comment below and you found any value in this video please hit the like and subscribe leave me a comment or a story and i will see you next time but in the meantime stay spooky <laughs>